Hello, my beautiful co creators. Lilu here in Arizona on the Juicy Living Tour. We're at month four right now of this incredible tour around the US, meeting inspiring people like you, Zephy. Thank you for taking the time and to have this goddess conversation. How juicy is that? That's very juicy. It <laughs> connects to your tour. You know? Yes. Goddess is juicy. So it's really beautiful that mm. we're doing that and we finally talking about her. Yeah. You know, in this in this way. Uh-huh. Through your so tour. So you're you're talking about her. Yes. So it's an entity, it's a... Well, no, it's an energy. It's an energy. It's the, the feminine energy. energy. You know, it's the powerful feminine energy that we've forgotten. So it's time for us to bring her back to life, you know? A lot of goddesses have been doing that since ancient times. So the Western world has kind of forgot that aspect of being a goddess. So I think it's time for the Western world really to understand what goddess is. Mm. How and did you rediscover how... Uh, well, I think it's a memory in all of us, you know, uh, the males have their own memory in their DNA and the females have their own memory in their DNA. But we forget, we forget how to be and how to honor ourselves and how to take care of the God and Goddess within us as well, not just the Goddess part, you know. The male and female energy is very, very powerful. And the way I discovered it is a long process. It started pretty much uh, in 87. Mm -hmm. and through my travels of India and uh, all over the world and finally got me to Sedona uh, I think five years later and she kept me here and she's feminine her name is Sedona you know she's the goddess she's mm -hmm. really red and powerful and she's got that aspect of first chakra so she's very juicy mm -hmm. as you know mm -hmm. Sedona is very juicy I feel her energy yeah yes and that's what uh, she did you know she brought me here and kept me here through tribulations and changes and no one really understood the path at the time but I think it took a lot of um, how you say a lot of uh, guts in a sense to do that when to begin when no one else was doing the work mm -hmm. in 87 did you find a lot of resistance within yourself being Greek originally and European background to open up to this energy absolutely you know being a, being a Greek and being in Greek Orthodox Church uh, grew not growing up with that of course we do have the goddess aspect there but uh, you know, in the family, when I took this path and I took the stance to do the work, they thought I was a witch. They thought I was this, you know, bad person. She left a, a marriage and she left a great job in the fashion industry and, you know, lost all her money in the stock market and just really took off and to be in this path. And I had a lot of tribulations within the family. Mm -hmm. It took me 10 years for the family to speak to me. Mm. So how did you dealt with that? What were some of the things? Because a lot of people face that, you know, when when really we found our path or something calling us, like Sedona or oh the path yeah in in, in general. How do we deal with? I think the way to deal with it is understand who you are and under find your love within yourself. Really get the juiciness in yourself. You know, don't worry what people say; they will turn around. And my family did turn around slowly, but it had to do with me finding me. Mm -hmm. So when I accepted me and loved me with all the negative aspects, all the positive aspects, all of myself, my family turned around mm -hmm. because they understood that I was doing the work. They don't, it doesn't matter if they know what the work is about, but they saw that the path was simple and easy and then they started loving it. My mother, she's 75 years old now, through my group in Greece, because I have groups in different parts of the world, through my group in Greece, he gets Reiki. She gets, she does meditation. My mother, which is 75 years old, yeah. and you know, when I was going through my path, she didn't even accept it. Mm -hmm. So it's so beautiful to see that even a 75 year old woman can shift with not really understanding what the path is about. Mm. Just because she feels it in her heart, and she sees her daughter really changing through that process. Mm. So I hear, I hear a lot of unconditionality in all of this. Like you're, you're accepting yourself, your path, and then it's people around you sh start to shift themselves. Absolutely. Compassion is first. Awareness actually is first, and then is compassion. You are, you're aware of who you are. The awareness of who you are brings you into compassion. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's no judgment. There's no judgment if you skinny or fat or tall or short or beautiful or not. It's the compassion because the beauty is inside. Mm -hmm. And that's what 
the path is about is beauty and juiciness and love and acceptance and understanding and living with no judgments mm -hmm. of, of everybody around you. And that's that's what the goddess is. Uh, that's what the goddess is teaching you. Absolutely, mm -hmm. the goddess is that path. She is compassion. You know, there's different aspects of it, of the goddess. We have, you know, the moon goddess, and we have the compassion goddess. In different traditions, you will find all different kind of goddesses. Even mm -hmm. in Christianity, there is the Black Madonna, which connects to the Hinduism with Kali. Mm. So, but you know, I think people have separate those things instead of understanding that all aspects of her is us in the male energy as well in the female you know not just in the woman mm -hmm. it, it, that exists in the man as well mm. so so it's it's strange how you speak about goddess because you, sp you speak about her I, absolutely <laughs> instead of it or us or it's like this entity or this group or this Describe that a bit more for us, because it's the first time I hear that it put in this, in this in, way. In a her. Well, yeah. it, the, it's a long story, and it's a long understanding of the story, and it started with the path of Isis in, in a lot of ways, you know, from Egyptian times. And she was probably the original living goddess, because that's why I'm calling her. There were goddesses that actually walked on this earth of the stories that we know. You know, the ancient Greek goddesses as well. They walked, according to the Greeks, they walked on this earth. Um, the Egyptian goddesses so much, they didn't work, but in mythology, they are part walking on this earth. So I call her, I call her, her because I believe in the living goddess in all of us. So her is you, you know, her is me. It's everybody, every woman out there and every man out there. She lives within us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the her part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, she's alive. Yeah. To me, she's not an entity. She's not, she doesn't just live in, you know, in so the I'm universe. Uh -huh. it, you know, she lives within me. So mm -hmm. if I walk within her, you know, with her inside of me, she's her, correct? Mm -hmm. so, so that's why on, you have a... You have a, how do you call it, uh, hotel, you know, you have a, a place where you worship I yes. mean, or you bring forth that. Absolutely. To strengthen that within you, I mean, what's the purpose? It's to strengthen that within me and really live, making it live within me. In different traditions, you know, like in Hinduism or in Tibet, they do what it's called empowerments. And in the empowerments, you sit and you visualize yourself as that of whatever the empowerment might be. You know, it could be Tara, or it could be uh, Vajrayogini, which is another female goddesses. So you visualize yourself as that, which means that you take that energy upon yourself, mm -hmm. and then you have to walk it on this earth. Because mm. yes, you can be spiritual, but you can be spiritual maybe outside of yourself. But the spirituality is really inside. And so you have to understand how to walk that how to be that. Mm -hmm. Does it make yes. clear sense what yes, I'm yes. saying? So, so men and women can bring that goddess energy. Absolutely. And it's time. Anytime. Yeah. And I have a lot of men that come and be part of our ceremonies here that we do every Friday. It's a private ceremony that it happens in my house for myself. But then sometimes we invite people and out of, out of nowhere other people invite people and then it becomes this incredible space of people male and female really understanding that energy mm. so how can we bring more of that energy every day what are some of the things that you would recommend the first thing that I would recommend is really start loving yourself you know every aspect of you you know, you're, if you're happy, enjoy the happiness for the moment. If you're sad, enjoy the sadness, you know, and get to know who you really are. And then slowly maybe, uh, you know, find a goddess that you connect to from any tradition. It doesn't have to be a specific tradition. And light a candle and sit in front of her and meditate for five minutes and say, what is the aspect that you have that is within me, but I don't recognize it? So help me recognize that aspect. Mm -hmm. And that's the way to start slowly, you know, because we have to, people say, well, you have a statue, so that's not a way to do it. But a statue is a representation of yourself, again. Mm -hmm.
you know, from different traditions. Mm -hmm. The icons in the Greek, you know, in the Orthodox or the Catholic Church, it's, it looks like a feminine, correct? So it looks like a woman. So why not look upon her mm -hmm. in any tradition? So how to find the right one? <laughs> how can we know that that's the right goddess to start with? Well, first of all... There's many. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. There is Kuan Yin in the Chinese tradition, which is his compassion. Mm -hmm. There is um, Vajrayogini, which is the goddess of bliss, the land of bliss. Um, there is Tara, that she's got 21 aspects, like, you know, the red Tara, which means power, the white Tara, which means purification. The same thing in the Hindu, you know, Lakshmi, which is the aspect of abundance, uh, Sarasvati, which is the aspect of music and really uh, being creative. Uh, Durga, which she's got all aspects about herself, you know, she's got all the strength. And Kali, which is the powerful one, the, the one she really can kill any negativity within ourselves. But we have to be very careful. We have to start gentle mm -hmm. with ourselves because we don't know the aspects yet. So we don't want to call Kali right away, mm -hmm. you know, because <laughs> we're not ready to get our ego you know, lower. Yeah. So our Kali's are about letting go of ego. So we have to s maybe as, uh, start with, say, Kuan Yin, which is compassion, mm -hmm. or Sarasvati, that is music and creation and beauty, you know, and speaking from our heart. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think to find the goddess within you is to understand you and where you want to go. Mm -hmm. That would be the simple way to do it. Mm, who's that right there? Um, that is... Uh, <laughs> Another beautiful statue. Yeah, this, uh, the, the energy of male and female. It's Vajra Sattva. As you can see, it's the male. And sh he's got the uh, female consort, which is it has nothing to do with the Western way of Tantra, as we think. The, you know, but it has to do with male and female blending within ourselves. Mm-hmm. So male is always stronger and bigger in the statues because w the male's energy is about protecting us, correct? It's about shine, it's the sun, as they say in Hinduism, it's Shiva. So he brings the light for the female to actually grow, for, to feel secure and safe so she can create. So the sun gives to the feminine, which is the earth. And what did the earth do? Brings all this beauty that we have. Mm -hmm. So she's, you know, she's, she's, she born, or not, how you say, um, she gets pregnant with beautiful and then she gives out. So that is what the statue represents, you know? Mm, beautiful. Tell us how this transforms really even your sex life to, to have, <coughs> to, to, you know, to worship God, it's the goddess in us. Well, I don't know, I, the word sex for me is, a, yeah. <laughs> it's a Western world, you know, work. Uh, word, but I will go from the Greek uh, word that we call lovemaking, or actually love offering. Mm -hmm. It's a Greek word, and um, it, and I can say it in Greek, but maybe it wouldn't make sense to a lot of people. But oh, it, there's a lot of Greeks watching. Really? From Greece. Oh. <laughs> go for it, and not to every Greek. <laughs> the the Greek word is iroteleti, which means it's. It's a sacred ceremony towards the god goddess. Mm -hmm. So it's about honoring the time that you get together with your partner, honoring that aspect within yourself and having that respect. And the male needs to really understand that she's carrying a lot of energy, his, his partner, you know, that carrying a lot of energy that is beauty. And he can emerge into that and, and just allow himself to, to be that. And then the female just gives, you know, just just surrenders and receives and then gives back to the, to the male. So it's about giving and receiving mm -hmm. within ourselves and, of course, with our partners. Mm -hmm. So first is starting with us. How can we give to ourselves, you know? How can we understand, and specific women, we have taken the male energy and we have changed it, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. We think we need to be powerful, we need to be like them, and then we expect them to be like us. Well, that's not true, they cannot, you know? We can do it all. I mean, that's not being egotistical, that's really the truth. We can chew gum, speak on the phone, and write on the computer. <laughs> the men are about yes and no. The only thing they know how to do is one thing at a time. And as long as we allow them to do that correct in our partnerships, then they will, they will actually 
flourish and they will give us back. You know? Mm -hmm. Does that make a little bit yes. sense? Yes, and it's beautiful how men uh, are embracing more their goddess energy too. Absolutely, absolutely, and they're Isn't doing it. Beautiful. A, they're doing it more often. Yesterday, I I was in this dinner and I heard, and I don't hear that many men around, but um, he said something about. Actually, she was explaining when she was asked to be married, he actually worshipped her first, and that was so beautiful to hear. You know, it wasn't a, the typical thing, let me be on my knees and give you the ring. He actually worshipped her and then asked her to marry him. And that meant giving her flowers or, or whatever it might be, just tell her how much he loves her. Or light a lamp like they do in Hinduism and really honoring that. Or doing like a little sacred ceremony between the couples mm -hmm. before they get into that union. Mm. I was going to ask you your thoughts about that because it seems like less and less people want to get married and more wants to give this union and, and a spiritual union. Well, I think marriage is, again, it's about how the world uh, became connected, correct? Like we have to have a way of family and the church made it as a union. You know what I mean? You have to get married under the church and all that. Even, you know, beliefs of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, they were in a sacred union. And that's very difficult for a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. a lot of us to understand. But through the research, you you finding there's a lot of books out there that talk about Mary Magdalene and, and Jesus really going into this powerful union. And a lot of us believe that you know the wedding that happens in the there's a wedding in the Bible that talks about him making a lot of more wine and a lot more fish. Do you know that? Remember that in Christianity? Anyway, there is a part there, I'm not going to go into it, but they, a lot of us believe that that was their ceremony. It was a seven day of a marriage going on. So uh, marriage should be a ceremony. And the only place that still really does a wedding as a ceremony, I think is probably traditions like, you know, India, mm -hmm. the ceremony seven days long or whatever. And they're the only religion or I, w I don't want to call it religion, but there's the only place in, in the world for over 10,000 years that continues worshiping the goddess. Mm -hmm. It's the only place. You know, the, you wake up with worshiping the goddess and you go to bed with worshiping the goddess. So that is the sacred union because in between they will worship Shiva as well. So the whole day is about worshiping the male and female. To me, that is union if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's not about going to church, wearing the white dress. It, that's part of it, to be pretty. The woman needs to be pretty. But I think we spend billions of dollars on just making a big wedding, you know? I think weddings should be from your heart. And it should be in, you, in, your, in your core. It should be your love. It's mm -hmm. not about the other people. It's about you and your partner at that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's also incredible to me to see, to notice that there's a lot of, uh, we bring a lot of Indian objects and a lot of Indian god and goddesses in, in our life in, here in Sedona, in Arizona, when there is a lot of natives. There's mm -hmm. a lot of really, an, like real ancestors here and a lot of worshipping and a lot of traditions and, you know, rituals. It's quite interesting to notice how it's very present everywhere. The the Hindu part. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of us have come to Sedona because we had like maybe Hindu wake up. You know, my path started in, in 87 and the first person that was a friend of me was a guru that took me to India, you know. So the Indian, the Native American aspect, it wasn't woken up within me. But I was very interested since I was a little girl, you know, the John Wayne movies that mm -hmm. were done here <laughs> in Greece. I will watch them and I was like, oh, I love Indian, you know, Native American. And then when I got here, that became part of my life as well. But it seems like the ceremonies still, I really, uh, they keep it kind of secret, you know, in the Nav Native American tradition. So we still, you still really feel, like when I went into the Hopi and to the Navajo, you have to be in your heart, you know, for them to allow to give you that out there. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And when I was introduced to that, it was the most incredible thing. I sat with an older, an elder in, um, in his house and I was eating. And I just first got here, it was probably a month here, and I was eating and, and I was thinking, oh my God, look how they live and would look at what we want. You mm -hmm. know, we want the cars, we want, you know, the, 
washer and dryer, whatever it is to make it luxury, and they live in the simple place. And the elder didn't talk to me for almost an hour. Okay, so he only looked at me and watched me. And I think he was in my thoughts, in, in my thoughts, you know. So all of a sudden he said, Zephy, do not worry, just eat. Mm -hmm. So he really, they feel you differently, you know. I think that maybe the Native American, the Hinduism is more, is gone out there, um, you know, very Western. But the Native American is still very sacred and is still very beautiful. And, and you need to be called to go to the ceremonies, you know. You need to be invited. And I think that's the difference, you know. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. difference with But it's beautiful how now we can all access some ancient secrets, though, and, and be with the goddesses, too. Absolutely. Like, it's part, I feel, of this unity and of all of us accessing to this, to this divine creation. Well, it's time. It's I time. It's time, it? don't you think? With yeah. all the new paradigms that's coming in and all the different energies that everybody talks about from the Mayan calendar to the Native American Hopis, they all talk about the shift. They all talk about this energy, you know? And I think it's time. It's time for us to really live with the Mother Earth. We're connecting with her and feel her heartbeat. You know, her heartbeat is, it's our heartbeat. So if we can feel that through a ceremony of the drums or a little Hindu, you know, puja that you can do in your house or a little even candle that you can light to the goddess, any goddess that you want. She's a goddess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, hello. <laughs> <laughs> She's a goddess. So that's how we begin. Uh -huh. So that yes. I think, uh, you know, all the traditions have different ways of uh, worshiping her so we got to find what's connect to us yeah and for me all of them are present yeah I love them all <clears throat> yeah I don't have any separation of his Hindu Tibetan Greek uh, Indian Native American all of it to me is one hello you and who's I have that? a little goddess right here yeah. <laughs> who's that this is Chandi Chandi she takes uh, her name from an ancient normally all my dogs had Greek names but this one was very powerful little being, so I decided to give her a native, uh, an Indian name, uh, the goddess of love and power, and her full name is Chamundi. So I call it Chandi for short. <laughs> mm, very very cute. So tell us what is what do you think is the um, importance of really bringing this goddess energy right now within the shift? What's the role of? of the women. Yeah. Uh, the role of the women is, is about her to understand that it, we, we are powerful but in a different way. Mm -hmm. We're not powerful with the male energy. The male energy is about, you know, uh, wars and fighting and struggling and uh, I gotta go out there and get this done. And that, that Mars energy, you know, that really powerful male energy. Our feminine energy, our goddess, the goddess within us, is about gentleness. Mm -hmm. It's about um, opening up our hearts, have no judgments, allowing compassion to really be there for everybody around us. You know, it's like when we have our <laughs> child, how do we, how much love we feel about that child, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And that's the love we need to share with everybody, not just our child. Because that's where we, we have inside. We're the mothers. We are the, the, the powerful women that we can just create. And so if we remember how to create out of love and out of compassion, not out of you know, fire and fight and struggle, then I think the goddess is really ready to wake up. Mm, beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Effie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Me I had too. such a great fun <laughs> doing this. <laughs> These are important conversation that needs to take place and be shared. And, you know, if you've enjoyed this interview, please share that with as many people as possible. Thank you. Much juiciness in your life. Bye.